Have a seat. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, we are afternoon now. You are juror number eight, is that correct? Uh, that is correct. All right, and if you can make sure you're right close to the microphone, that would be appreciated. Okay. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to swear you in to make sure that uh, all our answers are under oath. So okay. you can raise your right hand. Okay. Do you swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that, the, uh, that you will truthfully answer all questions about your qualifications to serve as a juror? I do. All right. A couple things. You filled out a questionnaire. Thank you for taking the time to do that. Um, now that you've had a chance maybe to reflect on something, is there anything that, well, first of all, was everything true on the questionnaire? Yes. Is there anything that you wanted to add or modify? Because sometimes when you reflect on what you've put in there, you might think, ah, I probably should have mentioned this or, mm -hmm. something, or maybe changed an answer here, and that's just fine because that's just the way the dynamic of writing something up but then thinking about it some more. Is there anything like that that you can think of on the questionnaire? Not that I can think of. Okay. Now, the questionnaire advised that you weren't supposed to read any articles. Um, you have some knowledge of the case from the media before you got your summons, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. And you've listed that in your questionnaire. Since you've gotten a questionnaire which advised you to avoid media, have you had any occasion to be exposed to anything about this case? Specifically, you know, maybe you saw a headline inadvertently or somebody said, oh, did you know something about this case? And Essentially, despite your best efforts, you were exposed to between the questionnaire and now as you sit here. Yes. Okay, and what was that? Well, it would be uh, some of the news that I've watched. Also, there will be something in regard to that on the, on the, uh, the news. Okay, and what substantively did you remember hearing or seeing about the case? Uh, really, it, it wasn't too much substance. Just it was more that... that uh, you know, it, it, the case, the trial was going to be coming up, and this and that, and and I, I don't, you know, I don't recall anything sub, sub, substantial. Substantial. Okay. So, uh, anything about the process or the lawyers or the parties? Anything that you learned about? No. Okay. No. Now. You've got to decide this case, if you are a juror, only on what you hear in the courtroom. You understand that? Um, do you think you could do that? Because you, you've got, as most people do now, they come in here having some knowledge about the case. And the question is, do you have some knowledge about the case? Is have you formed certain opinions that you cannot put aside because of the case? Or certain facts you can ignore? You have to put everything outside and just decide on what the evidence you hear, according to the law that I give you. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could do that? Yes. All right. Um, the lawyers will probably follow up on that as well. Uh, you were given a long list of witnesses who might testify in this trial. Did you recognize any witnesses on the list? No. All right. And as far as the length of trial, any concerns there? No. Okay. Uh, basically, it comes down to one of the questions we ask, which is, can you put everything aside and decide this case in a fair and impartial manner? And I think you said your answer uh, was yes. Is that still true? Yes. All right. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Nelson then for further inquiry. Mr. Nelson. Thank you, Josh. Good afternoon, juror number eight. Good afternoon. My name is Eric Nelson again. I'm just going to ask you a few questions. If there's anything I ask you that you don't understand or um, ask me to repeat, please let me know. Okay. And also, just as a reminder, we do need to use you know words as opposed to verbal or nonverbal nods, shakes of the head, things of that nature. Is that okay? Okay. All right. Um, first of all, I'm just going to ask you a series of questions in terms of yourself, get to know you a little bit better, and then I'm going to follow up on some of your questions um, in the uh, questionnaire. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, okay. 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 Good. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't feel that was my prerogative to tell. Um, so my first question for you is if you and I were to meet under cer certain, cer or excuse me, different circumstances, um, what are a couple of things about yourself that you would want me to walk away knowing about you? 
Well, I think that uh, it'd be that I'm I'm uh, kind. I think that I'm fair. Um, you know, I'm a family man. Okay. I'm a Christian. Okay. Um, you received a jury new, a du jury duty notice in the mail. Yes. And when you first opened that notice, what was your initial reaction? You know, I've, I've never been called for jury duty before, so I thought, well, you know, this is apparently this is my time. So, uh, and you know, I've known people that have that have served on jury duty, and and typically it's like a two week process. So I thought, okay, well, that's um, you know, it's my time to to, uh, to serve 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 on jury duty. Okay. Um, when you learned that it was in connection with this case, did that change your perspective? Uh, a little bit. Just my my feeling was that it was going to be most likely longer than a two week period. Okay. You note in your questionnaire that you have some concerns about safety and things of that uh, nature. Yes. Did you um, did those concerns come up as a result of being called on this particular case? Yes. Okay. How did you feel when you came to court today or yesterday? And you saw the current status of the Hennepin County Government Center. Uh, you know, I mean, just it, it, it just uh, represented to me the seriousness of the case, and uh, you know that you know potentially there could be some you know some protests or demonstrations, and, and uh, the, you know the government center, the county was taking taking the necessary precautions to try to prevent that. Did it make you feel better about coming to serve jury duty in this case? Or did it make you more concerned for your safety? More concerned for my safety. How about how did how did how did that impact you? Uh, well just again just being more more cautious and more alert and uh, just recognizing the seriousness of this case. Okay. And you had, um, you heard the judge's instruction this morning that your name would not be released and we're trying very hard not to release any identifying information about you through this process. Mm -hmm. Did that make you feel better or worse? Yeah, no, that made me feel better. Okay. Um, would you be concerned that your name were ever released to the public? Yes, could be, yep. Right. Um, is there, you know, I know that this isn't up, up to you, but if there was a magic amount of time that needed to pass between the verdict in this case and when your name was released, how long do you think that would be to make you feel safer? Probably six months. Okay. So, um, again, without um, identifying the company that you work for. Um, I understand you're in management of a, court, of a company? Yes. Okay. Um, in, in your role, and you also have some children as well, adult children? Yes. Okay. So in your role as a parent or in business, um, have you, can you think of a circumstance in which you've been called upon to resolve a dispute or a conflict between two people? Yes. Okay. Um, generally speaking, can you just tell me how do you resolve that dispute between two people? Well, in in business, it would be uh, talking to both people. I mean, getting getting the person aside, and and usually there'd be another, in this case, human resource person uh, with me, and and uh, you would hear what that what the one person had to say about the incident, and then. You'd, you'd uh, interview us at a separate time, the other person, and hear what they had to say, and then uh, you know try to put together what you know what the what the situation, uh, to the best of your knowledge, was. Okay. Um, are there other tools at your disposal within the workplace um, that you could go back and check or look for other evidence that supports one side or another? Yes, there there would be there'd be other people that if it was an incident they could you know you could have people that that maybe had witnessed it, 
or seen it that you would you would also talk to. And in your, um, would you do that as a part of your analysis or investigation in, in resolving this dispute? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so, assume there's a situation where two people are telling you two different things and there are no other witnesses and there are no videos or time cards or other objective data available. Right? Maybe this is more applicable to your kids. Um, how do you resolve that dispute in the absence of information? Well, you, you know, I would listen to the story uh, from both individuals, reflect on it, try to come back with you know, some ideas on, on some other questions, and most likely go back to them and talk to them again, I'm saying here's some, some situations that are some some comments that that uh, I have further uh, further questions about. Okay. Um, can you think of a situation again in either your professional life or in your personal life where you felt that you had decided a situation and you were you were certain you were right, and then it later turns out you were wrong? Uh, I'm sure there there have been. I I can't recollect specific, but. You know, I'm sure I made mistakes. Uh, you know, making uh, you know making a decision with the kids or whatever. How do you um, how do you view group decision making? Well, it's you know it, it would be a situation where you know you'd want to get everybody's input and opinion, and then just kind of weigh weigh through the circumstances, try to figure out. You know, was was that observation correct or not? Or let's have a discussion on it and try to you know try to build a consensus. Okay. Um, in this particular cir circumstance, it's un uh, a unanimous jury verdict would be needed. And what would ha how would you approach a situation where you felt uh, one way and other members of the group felt a, a different way? How would you work towards building that consensus to achieve a unanimous decision? Well, I would work work with the facts. I mean, what what the facts are, and and try to explain where my you know what what my opinion would be, and uh, you know try to have a discussion on you know where the differences are, and and um, you know work where, where can we agree on the points, and if there's more questions, try to try to seek out more information. Okay, so that's a that raises a good point. Is the information you're going to be provided would occur during the course of the trial. You understand that? Yes. And the deliberation process does not allow for you to come back and ask for more information. So where along the spectrum of we need more information, how much information do you need in order to make a decision when you may be looking for something else? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean it's uh, you know you'd have to work. I mean work hard at trying to trying to uh, again to lay out the facts, lay out the information, and uh, you know trying to come to an agreement. Uh, Are you the type of person who would be willing to re-examine your own beliefs, your own opinions, in order to achieve that consensus? I mean, I, 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 I would certainly evaluate my, you know, my, my facts or the, the, the basis for my information. I could, you know, I'm, I could go back and reflect and, and analyze that, yes. Okay. And likewise, if you were just 100% convinced I'm right, would you necessarily just agree with someone just to get it over with, kind of? No. Um, do you have any concerns about uh, serving as a juror in light of COVID? No. Okay. So I'm going to ask you and follow up with a few questions about answers in your um, questionnaire, if that's okay. And I understand you haven't read it in a while. I'll tr do yes. my best to refresh your yeah. <laughs> months, questions. yes. Um, so there's a question that asks about what you had heard about the situation, what you had read, et cetera, and whether you had formed an impression of 
Mr. Chauvin in this particular case? Do you recall that question generally? Generally, yes. Okay. And would you disagree if I told you that you answered that you had formed a very negative opinion of Mr. Chauvin? Is that, was that my answer? Yes. Okay. And that you said that you had formed an opinion that Mr. Chauvin had used excessive force in this particular case? Yes. Okay. Um, obviously, that's an issue in this particular case. Do you understand that? Yes. Um, are you, do you still hold that same opinion today that you did back when you filled out this questionnaire? I would say yes. Okay, and that's fine. Um, I appreciate your honesty. But I guess your ultimate role as a juror in this particular case would be to hear all of the evidence. Agreed? Yes, yep. yep, yes, absolutely. And you would need to hear from, just like any other dispute, there are two sides. Yes. Um, are you willing to listen to the entirety of the evidence? Yes. Are you willing to base your decision on that evidence as it's presented in court? Yes. Are you willing to um, give up that opinion that this was excessive force? if evidence were to be presented that convinced you otherwise? Yes. And I believe with respect to um, Mr. Floyd in this particular case, um, you really had a neutral impression of him, didn't have a whole lot of information about him. Would that be fair? That's correct. I believe you said, recognize that there was some uh, past employment, some past issues, but otherwise you hadn't formed any opinion. That's correct. Is there anything that has changed about that opinion since you filled out this? No. Okay. Still view him in a neutral light? Yes. Good. The, the questionnaire asks you again um, that whether you had talked about Mr. Floyd's death with your family, friends, coworkers, discussed it online, and you checked yes that you had, right? Yes. And th that's understandable, right? Yes. Um, but specifically, you stated that you, in that context, you um, felt that the officers used excessive force again. Yes. And so in the course of those discussions and, and sharing your opinions with your friends, family members, coworkers, that was the opinion that you shared with them. Yes. And again, are you willing to re-examine that same opinion? Yes, I am. You were asked a question about the uh, effect of the protests that occurred after Mr. Floyd's death and the impact that you had, that they had on this community. Do you remember that? Yes, vaguely, yes. Okay. Um, you, and you indicated that it was, a, that you felt, and I'll just read your writing, definitely negatively, I have friends who have moved out of their condos in downtown Minneapolis. My wife and I have no desire to go out in downtown Minneapolis. Um, has, does that answer in any way affect your ability to be impartial about this case? No. I mean, understanding that Minneapolis is a much different place than it was nine months ago, ten months ago, um, do you think that you can set aside your fear of Minneapolis or your concern about the, the riots and be a neutral, objective juror in this case? Yes. Now, one interesting answer that you provided is that um, you were asked the question, have you ever personally seen the police use more force than was necessary? You checked no. But again, you answered uh, for the third time, about the excessive force used in this George Floyd video. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me, and, and this is what I just need to understand, it sounds to me is that you had formed a very strong opinion about what you saw in that video. Yes. And you've watched the video numerous times, right? Yes. So, I mean, it was obviously of concern to you throughout the um, 
throughout the time when you were filling out this questionnaire that, that you had a pretty strong opinion. Yes. And do you persist in that opinion as you sit here today? Yes. But what you're telling us is, is that you would be able, specifically, to judge this, this case based upon the facts and evidence as presented in this case? Yes. Uh, there was a, a series of questions that had like a strongly agree, strongly disagree series of questions. You remember those generally? Kind of generally, yes. Um, and it, it seems to me that you have a, a belief that um, people of color are treated differently by the system than the people who are not of color. No, I, I mean, I think I think there's, there can be, uh, or there is racism, racism uh, demonstrated, but I think that the, the system itself uh, would treat people equally, whether the judge or the jury or whatever, that can, racism can come into fact, come into place there, but the system, I, I would say no, I don't, I don't feel that the system is, is uh, unequal. Um, so one of the questions, for example, is, is that police in this country treat whites and blacks equally, and you strongly agreed with that? I would agree, this, yes, that the system does, but I also understand there is racism, racism overtones and, and actions by people. Is it, is it that you feel the media conflates or exaggerates the problem? Yes, I think they do. Uh, you also had some pretty negative views on the Black Lives Matter movement. Yes. Can you, would you care to expand on those more? Sure, I mean, you know, Black Lives Matter, absolutely. Uh, as far as the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, I've I've done some research and I've read some articles and this and that as far as the, the organization or the politics. Uh, you know, I, I have, uh, you know, I have some, some misgivings about, about, you know, some of the, the platforms that they've, that they uh, uh, emphasize. Okay. And you also have some stronger opinions about Blue Lives Matter as well. Yes. And, and those are very favorable opinions, right? Yes. Do you, would you agree that this case is not about either one of those causes? Yes. Um, can you set aside your opinions about those particular causes? And again, judge this case on the evidence and the facts in this case? Yes. Do you feel that the, um, the way this manner has uh, proceeded has um, alleviated some of your concerns about your personal safety and your family's safety? Would you feel comfortable serving on this jury? Yes. I'm going to ask you one other question is, is if you had, if I gave you a checkbook and it was unlimited in its resources and you had to write a check fix what you perceive to be the problem with the judicial system. Where would you write that, where would you send that check to? Well, I would, I, the George Floyd family. Okay. And why? Because it's a loss. I mean, it was a loss to, you know, to that, that family and it wouldn't make up, the check wouldn't make up for the loss, but I guess that's my opinion of where I would write it. And how about more broadly speaking, in terms of if, if that check was to be written to fix something that's broken in the system, where would that check be sent to? I would say probably, you know, police, uh, 
you know, maybe training or reform uh, procedures. Your Honor, may I have a moment? Do you want to continue now, Your Honor? I think it'll be a while. All right. Um, it is 12.30. Uh, actually, I would, uh, because we've got another group of jurors coming at 1 o'clock. So if you don't mind, sir, we're going to keep going. Sure. No, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, actually, let's do a sidebar first. Well, I've changed my mind. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is give you a chance to go back to the jury lounge. Everybody here has been at it since 8 a.m. Okay, so we want to give them a lunch break. Um, we actually, because they're going to be held over, we have a lunch for you. Okay. So you and the other juror who's waiting. Yep. So we'll have you return to that okay. room, and we'll bring you back up probably at 1.30. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you all. All right. We're in recess till 1.30.